Hey, welcome to the Max. Y'all come on in. Welcome to our farmhouse. So this is our main living area. It's a very large and open area. This is the place where we tend to just kind of come in, take our socks off, kick our feet up, and relax in the afternoons. So in addition to you see, we have some books up here. They're kind of like our go-to when we're looking for something on the homestead. But in addition to that, it's something kind of funny. So I use this space down here is like my, where I store my soaps, um, soaps that are already done and soaps that are drying out. And it does make the living room smell pretty lovely all the time. So as many of you know, you have watched our channel in the past, if you haven't, welcome, but a lot goes on in our kitchen. I'd say that the kitchen kind of centers our life because again, we cook so much, we make so much from me processing milk right here on the counter at 4 o'clock to us making supper at 5 and 6 and 7 o'clock and then having to clean up after five kids. Yep. And y'all know that I make bread, um, our homemade bread, we bring our eggs in here our honey storages and things like sprouts stay in here in the kitchen. Um, well, I should have grabbed our homemade vanilla too, but I left it up there. So, so much goes on here in the kitchen. Um, like Colby really hit it. So much goes on here. It's the center of everything. And one thing that we really try to focus on here in our homestead is how to be frugal. So one of the things that Colby learned how to do, and this is a piece that we redid that cost us little of nothing pennies to the dollar. And it's a nice storage space for things like our milking containers. So an easy build, and it costs very cost effective. All right, as you can see, basically our house is one big open floor plan. Uh, with having five kids, you know it can be kind of crazy. Plus we homeschool, plus Misty's home. We focus our life in these two rooms, as Misty said. So as you see, it's just one big open room that we get to have fun in. All right, so as Missy said, um, we like to be frugal, we like to repurpose furniture, we like to do all kinds of things, and it kind of makes it more personal to us. But one of the things Misty wanted was a bed. So uh, in my cheapskate way, and in our frugal way, and innovative way, we decided to build this bed. We found a few plans offline that we, we kind of liked, and then we just kind of put our spin on it. So Misty kind of gave us the okay, so we built this big monster headboard with this big bed. Um, and again, saves money, we enjoy it. It has just a little bit of a, of a personal feel to it, just like it does when we eat our own vegetables or cook our own meat, as it allows us to sleep in our own bed. Okay, so we keep our meat birds and we have kept our first and second batch of chickens that we hatched out here on the homestead um, in breeding boxes in our garage. This is just temporary until they go to their permanent place um, out in the yard. So again with uh, meat birds, the reason a lot of people raise meat birds, especially on the homestead, for us it takes about 60 to 75 days to uh, be able to provide a lot of meat. Our, our Cornish Cross last year were about three to four pounds. This year we got jumbo, so hopefully they'll get a little bit bigger. But uh, when we raised about a half a year's food in 75 days, so we, had, we were chicken independent. Uh, so it's a great way to think about not only your eggs, not only having pretty birds in the yard, but having a consistent way to have your meat on your farm. Okay, you can see we have tons of milk in our outside fridge. This, this fridge is devoted to milk and the production of it. You see we, we pull cream off. Basically that's how Misty makes butter. If she's making yogurt, she'll use this and pour it up into the Instapot. Uh, but you see we milk is a big vital part of our homestead. We utilize it for so many different things. Um, and to, again, 
cows are brown. I would say our dairy cows, as hard as it is to raise dairy cows, and, and it is a sacrifice, it's definitely one of the biggest assets on the homestead. I think if you have the opportunity to hand milk, hand milking to me allows you to be personal with your cow. I really enjoy hand milking. However, uh, we are milking two now. I do have another job, so this allows me to, to expedite that a little bit quicker. Also, with us having two milk cows, when we need to go somewhere, we go to a conference, or we'd like to go take our family somewhere, um, the only way I could ever get someone to come milk and farm sit is usually by having a milk pump so they don't have to sit there and try to hand milk two cows. So we opted for this milk pump. We, we can leave a, a kind of a, a tap board up, up top. You can see how it runs, but we really like it uh, after the modifications we've done and we'll link that video uh, up here. All right, as you can see, we're in the stanchion again. We have several videos talking about stanchion training, talking about building the stanchion. We believe in dairy. So again, this is a vital part of our homestead and our farm. So basically, when it comes to, to milk, we don't process our milk. We drink it raw. We take the cream raw. We take the skim raw. If we don't drink it, our other animals do. So not only are we feeding cows, uh, their calves, we're feeding us. Uh, we get about anywhere from two to three gallons a day between the two milk cows, plus we're nursing two baby calves. So we're very pleased with that and that definitely takes care of our family. We do. Uh, now I'm not saying you need to buy from just a regular old dairy farm because I don't know their cleanliness. When you drink raw milk, it's all about the cleanliness of the cow, making sure it's got good nutrients to eat in the ground, but also make sure your dairy man or whoever is milking is taking all the precautions to make sure they're getting good, fresh, clean milk for you. We really enjoyed the benefits of having raw milk from our dairy girls, um, knowing that it's pure milk. Um, okay, we are. <laughs> All right, Rue, hush. We are in the middle of our orchard, as you can see. And in the middle of our orchard, we have our chickens, a set of our chickens. This is one flock. This is our flock that we use Premier One netting fencing with that we are able to move these chickens. Now, you see right now, they are scratching and eating bugs in the fruit orchard. And they are also going around and putting droplings all in the roots of our fruit orchard too, around the roots. So great benefits to be able to do that. We also use these chickens. We have moved them where our strawberry patch is at. We have also used them over in our gardens. So having our chickens and being able to move them in this fence, we have seen um, great benefits from that. This is a small movable chick shawl that we keep in with our chickens, of course, that move. Um, we built this with leftover materials that we had and we utilize this on a daily basis on the homestead. So over the years we've really tried to grow our beehives. We really enjoy having bees on the homestead. It has been a great learning experience over the past two years for our family. And to get fresh raw honey is one of the many great things about having bees on the homestead as well as they are amazing pollinators. Okay, so this was our lettuce starts. This was our last lettuce that we started growing. We try to do year-round growing here. So as we get closer to the bigger hugoculture beds and also the bigger potato beds, you'll see way bigger lettuce and as lettuce starts playing out, this will start playing in. So it allows us to have progressionary months of lettuce pretty much all year long. You see that some onions, these are the younger onions, some carrots here. So again, we have these beds are kind of finishing up from spring. These onions are brand new and they'll kind of go through early spring to summer. And then we have some bigger onions that came through winter and now it's gonna be ready to be harvested probably the next month or so. 
Okay, so as we were talking about progressionary growing, we do raise beds. Most of our garden, of course, we'll show you in the next few uh, moments, but progressionary growing. You see our spinach is still okay, but it's starting to die out. This is our spinach that we grew over the winter. And then you see the new lettuce. This is some of the new lettuce we just planted between all the, the spinach that's starting to play out. We'll eat the rest of this. The cabbage is starting to play out. We've got three heads of cabbage left over here that's starting to play out. But look at the new growth of all this, this oak leaf lettuce. This is the purple butter crunch. So you can see it's doing really well. Our goal is to, to eat in season. So as we eat this lettuce, this will finish up. The remainder will go to the animals or in compost. The rest will come up and we'll start growing again. It's the endless cycle. We've got the broccoli. Some of the broccoli still got heads, but some of it's flowering. Um, then we have the potatoes. All the potato beds here. You see they're doing great. We have one little section that's not, but you know, we've probably got 70 or 80 hills planted just right here. So very pleased with that. See this bed over here. These are agriculture beds. These are deep bed mulch uh, with compost underneath. Um, we've got onions and garlic back here. You've got asparagus. So again, you see we have perennials, we have biennials, we have annuals, we have quick grows. So when we talk about growing, we have growing systems such as hucoculture, growing systems such as compost. We have perennials, biennials, annuals, and then of course quick grow. So you see, if you need all of that to, to have a complete growing cycle for your family to eat all seasons long. So uh, you've seen a lot of our beds, but I wanted to share with you how easy these were to put together. So these were um, some boards that we picked up that were fairly inexpensive and Colby basically just put them together and then we put some soil in there and then we planted. So this, it can be as elaborate and complicated as you want it or these beds can be as simple or as easy and really as inexpensive as you want them to be too. As we eat our other broccoli and we have eaten it through a season, this will be our new season of broccoli that will feed us basically for a whole nother season. This is probably one of my favorite places. So this is my greenhouse and the kids enjoy it I think as much as we do. You know, you can see that we have, I'm not gonna go through all of this for sake of time, but you can see that this is all of things that I have started almost every bit of this from seed. Um, lots of stuff growing. This is things, herbs, vegetables, that again, we talk so much about the progressionary growing, but this will grow up behind all the things that have are, are already established and just keep that growing cycle going like Colby has mentioned before. Okay, so again, as we talk about being sustainable, uh, we mentioned the chickens, how in chick with um, broilers, especially with Cornish Cross, uh, that industrial bird, within 60 to 75 days, you have a freezer load of, of chicken. Well, same way with, with pigs. If you've noticed, we have usually an industrial style animal, and then we have a heritage sustainable style animal. With our pigs, with our chickens, with our dairy and meat cows, the same way. So this is, this is the different breed. This is the Yorkshire Blue Butt versus the American Heritage Guinea Hog. So American Gary, uh, Guinea Hog, it's a fat lard pig that basically you just saw, and it allows us to have sustainable pigs, and we have piglets coming right behind. We could do the same thing with these, but these are our purpose with these are called feeder hogs. Their goal is to eat, to enjoy their life for a short season, within a year, hopefully within eight months to a year, 
you're processing your pork chop, your bacon, your ham, and your sausage. So it allows you to have your industrial style, typical you're going to buy the supermarket meat, along with having pigs that will keep your cycle going on your farm. Same way we talk about the chickens. You have your layers who will always provide incubation, always provide new chicks, always provide uh, your eggs, but then you have your meat birds that's going to provide your meat. So again, as we talk about chickens, we talk about pork, we're providing meat for our family. So within the year, now you're providing yourself in a small location with a deep bed mulch or in a forest. You're providing yourself pork chops, ham, bacon, and sausage. Can't beat, can't beat that. All right, as we finish up this video, we're sitting on our monster of a garden that we have. Uh, we do practice no-till gardening, uh, and, and as we see stuff coming up, uh, really spring, and then we've got some more, again, progressionary growing. So some things will be coming up uh, a little bit later in the season, but I mean, I, this is one of my favorite things to show. So. Yeah. so we really enjoyed implementing the tart method with weed barriers. I think that was a main goal of ours this year here on the homestead. Um, is to really practice weed control where we grow our food items. So far we've had really good success um, with cardboard and wood chips using the tart method. So we're excited to see what the, this year is going to bring out of our big garden bed this year doing that. We really try to expand it even more than what we usually do because uh, again our goal is to show that you can grow your food all year round. If it be vegetation, meat, honey or doing your home items in your home. You can't beat what we're trying to implement here. And so many of the things that we do are some are hard work and some are very simple and anybody could do and I guess that's the message that we're really trying to get across. So if you're growing a 10,000 square foot garden like us or you're doing small 10 square foot raised beds, grow something, enjoy what you're doing, have a hobby, and ultimately try to provide for your family doing all that you can. Happy homesteading, y'all. God bless. Happy homesteading, y'all.